If you are brand new to HTML, chances are you've seen the code before. In fact, this code created the page we are looking at. Take a look at the basic anatomy of a web page. We have the URL address, the title bar, and in the web page itself, we have the content like header text, paragraph text, images, hyperlinks, and so forth. Now let's take a look at the basic anatomy of an HTML page. We use these angle brackets to code with HTML. They are the less than and greater than symbols on our keyboards. The very top and bottom of an HTML page must be denoted with these HTML elements to signify the start and end of a document. We have our opening tag and our closing tag. Much of HTML coding consists of opening and closing tags. The forward slash is what makes it a closing tag. Good coding will also include a head section. We put the title of our page here. This is considered metadata, data about data, information that is meant for search engines. Now we get to the body tags of our document. Everything we put inside these tags is for the web page itself. This is our header tag, and this is our paragraph tag. When I was new to HTML, I was confused as to why there was a title tag and header tag. Isn't that the same thing? Well, no. The information inside the header tags will appear on the web page itself, whereas the information inside the title tags appear in the browser tab. Let's jump into the actual coding, and I'll explain the rest of the tags there. We do our coding in what are called text or code editors. Macs come with a text edit app, and PC users often use Notepad++. We are going to use Visual Studio Code because it's also free and available to both kinds of computers. You can download it at this URL address. I added the link to the description. I'm a Mac user, so I'll grab this one. If you don't use a Mac, you probably want this one. It should automatically download, although maybe you need to click on a zip file to unzip. Let's click to open it up. You should see a welcome page like this. We can't do anything until we create a folder. Click on open to do this. Check to see where you are saving it and then select new folder. I'll name it HTML. Create and now I can open it. Take a look at our activity bar over here. There's my new folder. I won't overwhelm you with everything you can do in the activity bar. Just know that this Explorer icon shows you the structure of your project, the folders, the files, etc. Down here is an extension option that we will use in a moment. If you hover over the file folder, you'll see the first option allows us to create a new file. Let's click on it and name it index.html and press enter. You can name it whatever you want, but index is typically what you should name your home page or root page of a website. Before we begin, click on extensions icon and in the search bar type live preview. We want this Microsoft one. It'll probably be the top one. Clicking on it should automatically install it. We see this tab pop up. I'll close it out and click back on my Explorer icon. Now, when I hover over my file, I can right click and select show preview. Our coding workspace has now turned into a side-by-side -side code slash preview workspace. The meaning of this will become clear in a moment. Let's begin coding. Start by typing HTML and angle brackets. What is great about this code editor is that it intuits the closing tags. Big time saver. I like to click in between the tags and enter to create visual organization. HTML ignores everything that is not inside some sort of tag, so this is for our benefit. Let's insert our head tag next. Remember, this is for our metadata. Then insert the title tag inside of that. I'll call this basic web page. Nothing appears here yet because the title appears in our web browser. In fact, our tab is now reflecting the name we gave it. Let's insert our body tags next. Then I'll start with a header tag, H1. Inside those, I'll type, this is my header. Now the preview window becomes relevant. We are starting to accumulate some code, so let's click on the file dropdown and be sure that autosave is checked. Now we shouldn't have to worry about losing any of our work. Next, let's insert our paragraph tags and write. This is my first paragraph. Let's do another. This is my second paragraph. Let's do something more exciting and code for a hyperlink. We use the ahref tag followed by an equal sign and then any URL address inside of quotes. I'll use this example one. Once you add your closing bracket, the closing tag of forward slash a should prefill. 
Now, inside our link tag is where we type the text our user will see. On to how to code images. This is our image source tag. Type as follows. Then, inside of the quotes, type in the name of any image you have saved on your desktop. I have this kitten image. Remember that JPEG or PNG extension. This is telling me that I have a broken image, meaning it can't find that image. This happens to me all of the time because I get ahead of myself. Let's fix this. Go into however you like to organize your files on your desktop. Look for your HTML folder, the one we just created, and then the image you had chosen. Drag that image into the HTML folder. Now I can see it. We can only see images that are located inside our folder. Note that the image source tag does not require a closing tag. It is good practice to add more information inside this tag. Add the alt information here. That's where we describe the image. Now let's make our image smaller. We use width and height to do that. If you want to keep your image in proportion, just choose one. I'll do just width. I'll type width equals 300 in quotation marks. Let's add two more images. I will add the other two kitten images I have saved. And I need to remember to move them into my HTML folder. I'll use the same width and remember to add that alt information. I see that my link is not staying put. It will if I put it inside of its own set of p tags. There we go. Say I want them even smaller. Easy enough. I'll change the numbers to 200. Take note of the bottom slider. We can also resize our side-by-side -side windows in this manner. Notice that our images are side-by-side -side until we narrow the browser. What if I don't want my images to be side-by-side? -side? I can code paragraph brackets around each image. This isn't just for text. The P tag will neatly block off anything you put inside of it. Because this editor is autofilling my closing tags, I have to cut and move them where I want. I could also put them inside of just one set of paragraph tags. Now try changing the width tag to a height tag to see how that changes. The live preview is so helpful, especially when you care about your design layout. We are coding and designing pages simultaneously. Let's learn one more thing how to create bullets and numbered lists. I'll use the UL tag and organize my code to keep it neat. Then I will add list tags, LI, and inside of those we type what we want the user to see. Every line of a list tag inside the UL tags will be bulleted. Same process to create a numbered list, except that we use OL tags instead of UL tags. The logic behind these tags is that UL stands for unordered list and OL stands for ordered list. Make sure your work has been saved. If you click on this link, it will reopen in a browser window. Then when you click on the link there, it should go to that link. Of course, we don't need to open our files inside Visual Studio Code. We can close this out and then open up our HTML file from our desktop where we saved it. Our internet browser knows what to do when it spots that HTML extension. There is more to learn, of course, but I think beginning with how to code a single page is a great start. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking it with a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be sure to catch my newest tutorials.